Grand Duchess Maria Alexandrovna of Russia, Duchess of Edinburgh, and Duchess of Saxe Coburg and Gotha. Grand Duchess Maria Alexandrovna of Russia was the wife of Prince Alfred, Duke of Edinburgh, and Duke of Saxe Coburg and Gotha, the second son of Queen Victoria of the United Kingdom and Prince Albert of Saxe Coburg and Gotha. She was born on the 17th of October, 1853, at Saskoya Selo, near St. Petersburg, Russia. The only daughter of Alexander II, Emperor of all Russia, and Princess Marie of Hessen by Rhine. Marie has seven siblings, Grand Duchess Alexandra, Sadovich Nicholas Alexandrovich, Alexander III, Emperor of all Russia, Grand Duke Vladimir, Grand Duke Alexei, Grand Duke Sergei, and Grand Duke Paul. Raised as the only daughter, Marie was very close to her father, who was completely devoted to her. She also had very close relationships with her brother, but was not particularly close to her mother. Despite this, her mother's death in 1880 was very difficult for Maria. During a family holiday in Hesse in 1868, Marie first met Prince Alfred. Despite the misgivings of both her parents and Alfred's mother, the couple was married on the 23rd of January 1874 at the Winter Palace in St. Petersburg, Russia. Upon their return to London, they took up residence at Clarence House in London and Eastwell Park in Kent, which they leased until 1893. Marie and Alfred had five children. Prince Alfred, nicknamed Afi, hereditary Prince of Saxe Coburg and Gotha, Queen Marie of Romania, Princess Victoria Melita, the future Grand Duchess Victoria Fedorovna of Russia, Princess Alexandra, Princess of Hohenlohe Dachenberg, and Princess Beatrice, the Duchess of Galleria. The new Duchess of Edinburgh was not well received by British society. Many of them thought her to be condescending and haughty. And from most accounts, this was very true. Used to splendor and pageantry of the Russian court, she found the British court very dull by comparison. She also thought that as the daughter of an emperor, she should outrank all the other members of the British royal family, in particular her sister-in-law, the Princess of Wales, who was merely the daughter of a king. Despite the demands of Marie and her father, Queen Victoria would not sanction anything of the sort. In August 1893, her husband became the reigning Duke of Saxe Coburg and Gotha upon the death of his childless uncle, Ernst II. They had owned a home in Coburg, Palais Edinburgh, since the early 1880s, but now took a permanent residence in Schloss Ehrenberg, the traditional ducal residence in the city. They also lived at Schloss Rosenau, which Ernst II had given to Alfred as his personal property. The new Grand Duchess of Saxe Coburg and Gotha, Marie was very pleased with her new position, no longer outranked by her sisters in law, and no longer under the constant watchful eye of her mother in law, Queen Victoria. From that point on, she rarely spent any significant amounts of time in Britain. In 1899, Marie and Alfred celebrated their 25th wedding anniversary. During the celebrations in January, their son Affy attempted suicide and died shortly thereafter. The following year, her husband died and the ducal throne passed to his nephew, Charles Edward, Duke of Albany. Marie returned to Palais Edinburgh and also spent much of her time at Schloss Rosenau. The remaining years of her life saw the overthrow of the Russian monarchy, the murders of many of her Russian relatives, and the end of the Duchies of Saxe Coburg and Gotha. Her last remaining brother, Grand Duke Paul, was murdered by the Bolsheviks in January 1919, leaving Marie the last of her generation. The Dowager Duchess of Saxe Coburg and Gotha died on the 24th of October 1920 in Zurich, Switzerland. Legend has it that she received a telegram addressed to Frau Coburg, which distressed her so greatly that it caused her death. She is buried alongside her husband in a ducal mausoleum at the Gokenberg Cemetery in Coburg, Bavaria, Germany. Following her death, Palais Edinburgh was led to her daughter, Princess Alexandra. The villa behind it, which had formed part of the residence, was left to her daughter, Victoria Melita, and became known as the Kyrill Palace. Both will eventually be sold to the government around 1940. 
If you enjoy this video, be sure to like, comment down below, subscribe, and hit the bell notification button so you get notified every time I post a new video. Anyways, guys, have an amazing day, and thank you so much for watching.